JoJo is a long-running series of mangas created by Hirohiko Araki and serialized by Shonen Jump since 1987. Through the span of the series, many iconic elements were introduced, from crazy poses, to fabulous clothing designs, to the cherry on top of it all, stands. Probably the second best magic system out there, they're a staple in JoJo branded and a source of federation from all of us. And I take a guess that you'd had the same questions I did when trying to make a custom one. How the f*** do I draw a stand? That's a very good question indeed. Stands can come in all sorts of forms and shapes, from humans to robots to plants to... whatever this is. There's just too much variety to choose from, but that's where I come in. Despite being quite low in the Jojo hierarchy on YouTube, I've been working this subject for the past two years, which you'd know if you watch my other videos, and was quite surprised to see that no one tackled the topic before. We've got some videos of stands being created, but not a video on how to make them. At least design-wise, I'm not touching abilities, that's a whole another can of worms. With that in mind, I'll take us through the history of stands designs, see how each part approached it, and how they evolved over time. I won't spoil anything plot-related, nor cover part 9, but I'll be showing stands from the manga to the end of part 8, so if that's something that bothers you, I suggest you click out now. Still here? Then sit back, grab your frog phones, and join me as we learn how to make this stand. As all good stories do, it begins in Japan, with an old British guy explaining to his grandson how the magic system got retconned to being about punching ghosts now. It is here where we have our first introduction to stands. The main cast consists of Sir Platinum, Hermit Purple, Magician's Red, Tower of Grey, oh wait, nobody cares about you, Silver Chariot and Hierophant Green, which, side note, is the first stand ever to display the now iconic stand eyes. Design-wise, there are very few unifying factors among stands here, mostly because Araki was still searching for the right aesthetic, so stands like Dark Blue Moon, High Priestess, Bovers, the aforementioned Tower of Grey, etc. all look like living creatures of some sort. This changes as the part progresses and stands begin to have more unified features, especially the more robotic elements like Inatum, Osiris, Judgment and the Fool. Stands' eyes also make a return here and become more widely used. To quote the big man himself, When I design stands, I often take inspiration from artifacts such as clothing, masks, and dolls from indigenous peoples. Once I fuse that aspect with something biological or mechanical, it makes a really unique design. Originally, I imagined stands as being something inorganic powered by life force, so it makes sense that a lot of the designs are fusions between living beings and machines. Part 4 honors the tradition of late part 3 keeping the robotic slash mechanical features to most of them, with some notable more organic exceptions being Killer Queen, Stray Cat and Pearl Jam. We also see a return of stand wearing outfits, but these are modified or adapted to their stand rather than being regular pieces of fabric, adding to their uniqueness. Part 5 has the first big shift in terms of design. Here stands stop looking soft and start having harder edges, mainly in armor-like structures. These armor pieces, unlike previous parts, are portrayed as part of their bodies rather than something you'd place on top of it. Basically, if you take the armor away now, you take the stand away. The faces here also start looking like masks and many of them wear helmets or had add-ons of some sort. This helps differentiate each stand from the head alone and keeps their silhouette identifiable. There is a nice mix of robotic and armor parts happening in this part, with a few exceptions of course. We can also identify a trend of having an exposed torso or abdomen, with most armor-like body parts being focused on the chest or pelvis, with the added legs and forearms. Elbow and knee armor pads are also a recurring feature, with studded knuckles and segmented fingers being almost universal. The classic stands eyes are back as well, making for most of the cast this time, with a few variations here and there. These stand eyes ended up being the most recurring visuals I've gone for in my works as well. Since the design in this part is very streamlined, you can add all sorts of crazy patterns and features to it while still making it resemble a stand, granted right you follow the main features I've mentioned before. Just keep in mind that, while you can make most of your stand this way, you shouldn't make all of them this way. 
Variety is key when it comes to cast design and having an all-armored humanoid cast can take away from the uniqueness of it, but I digress. There are some important points to be noted here too. They actually appear in all parts, but parts 4 and 5 seem to lean the most heavily on it, in my opinion. The shoulders of the stand will more often than not have some sort of covering, especially if the rest of the body has any sort of armor likeness to it. The designs are almost always symmetrical, with very few exceptions. If some asymmetry is present, it usually appears in the form of the headpiece. Speaking of headpieces, they'll usually be the most iconic part of the stand. Some are very obvious and character defining, while others can be smaller and more subtle. Each stand will have a unique one, but other than that, the bodies tend to follow a similar pattern, mainly in part 5 that is. Moving on to part 6, the most notable changes to stands here come in the form of their patterns. We already saw patterns in the previous parts, but unlike them, part 6 patterns have a very unique implementation in their overall stand body. Not too unlike how armor was applied in part 5, as in being part of the body rather than something added on top of it. Stands like Planet Waves and Yo Yo Ma go even further, being mostly made out of textures, while Underworld has small symbols on its body. We also come across stands that have no facial features at all, such as Diver Down, Jumping Jack Flash and Marilyn Manson, which is worth noting that is one of the very few stands in this list that has any sort of fur or hair in the body. Part 7 is a mess of its own, not because the stands are bad, but because Araki tried making them a bit different compared to previous parts. They mostly work through their users instead of being the regular punching ghost and, as such, don't have a unified design. Visually, they range from a spray can, to a rope, to a literal dinosaur, to balloons. So you won't find any similarities here. By the later half of the series, we get some more regular biomechanical designs, from which Civil War would be the best example of what's to come. Jojolan is the furthest we've seen stands be pushed so far. Here, they are distinctively more artificial than organic in their appearance where you could mistake Star Platinum or the world for a creature, or even a human, there's no way you could mistake a stand from Joe Jolin as something of this world. For instance, Soft and Whitey is literally a robot, there's nothing organic or soft looking there, as ironic as that may be, but even the more soft looking stands still retain that otherworldly weirdness to them. You'll notice that the legacy of Part 5 remains here as well, with the studded knuckles, stand eyes and segmented joints. Some notable features to keep in mind is that stands hardly have straight lines or sharp shapes of any sort. If they do, it's usually limited to a single piece of the design. They mostly tend to have rounder forms in one way or another. In most cases, the details tend to be focused on the upper part of the body. That's not to say that the lower half is left blank, but it usually be either in line with the upper half's features or complement them by being less flashy or non-existent. Stands will have main areas of design, places where most details appear and where any particular symbols the stand might have will be placed, those being the head, shoulders, hands and chest. Lastly, stands will always stick to one or two defining features, any more than that and it looks too crowded, any less than that and it looks too blank. The features of choice normally relate to the user, ability or musical reference, though that's not always the case. Not only should you worry about how many features you have, but how to distribute them properly across the body, so no one place gets all the detail. So, with that in mind, what makes for a good stand design? The answer is... it depends. Yeah, I know, quite underwhelming, but it's true. At the end of the day, stand designs are like any other form of character design. It comes down to opinion. Some people will like a really mid stand, while others will trash talk an arguably superior design. What is most important for our purposes here though, is that, regardless of what our opinions might be, we're still able to make them believable and fitting to the original work. So if you don't have a design in mind yet, I recommend looking up our 8's design. They are by far the most iconic you can get in terms of stand-like visuals and you're gonna have an easier time than with other styles. 
If you don't like the full robotic vibe that much and want something more organic, then take a look into parts 5 and 6 for general inspiration. Their variety is great and they are the most solid of the OG universe's stance. But if you do have a complete design you'd like both to keep and make it more stand-like, there are some iconic features that you can add, those being hearts, diamonds and star shapes, sometimes even letters, small tubes and ridges across the body, either to connect body parts or set a pattern, segmentation, studded knuckles and of course the stand eyes. Keep in mind these are the icing and not the cake. If your stand is bland and boring to begin with, no amount of detail will save it. Colors deserve an entire video of their own, but in short, either research some color theory if you want a more classic palette, or look up Araki's traditional painted works to see what colors he uses to get that unique alien feel to it. Even though we went quite in depth into stand designs, don't think that you should stop here. All these tips and observations are a very small part of the larger character design spectrum, so anything you take from there will certainly benefit your stand making as well. It feels very different doing these type of videos, but I wanted to make a content related video for a while now and plan on keeping doing so. So if you have any suggestions of future topics to cover, be it Jojo related or not, please let me know in the comments. A huge thanks to all my patrons for supporting and keeping up with me all this time. If you like my content, definitely check out my social media, I post all the updates and the good stuff there. I also have a discord community with monthly events taking place, with art rewards, so if that interests you, check it out as well. And that's about it.